Thank you and welcome to the final panel discussion for tonight, dealing with synthetic cinema. Okay, I am the humble mediator, my name is Brian Ellsworth, and <coughs> I would like from here to here, introduce yourselves. Uh, Andrew Gernhard, producer. I'm John Doolin, screenwriter. I'm uh, Matt Wakanen, I do After Effects. Greg White, associate producer. I'm uh, Colin Thais, director. Jeanette Andriuli, I am the production designer. Okay. Well, I'd like to get the ball rolling. Very simply, start back at the beginning. Um, you know, what was the origins of synthetic cinema? Or first, would you like to describe what your individual backgrounds were before then? What kind of led you up to forming synthetic cinema? I should probably do the history. That be me. Uh, <laughs> synthetic cinema actually started out in 2004, and uh, since 2004, I think we've done about 12 feature films. Uh, we hit the market when uh, DVD was huge and Blockbuster. People remember what Blockbuster is? Mm -hmm. it used to be a store. Things called DVDs were in it. Um, that's when uh, our first, uh, I think, four films came out, four or five films came out to Blockbuster when they used to buy huge amounts of units. Um, and then, uh, luckily enough, our, our films got enough attention to get uh, uh, TV ratings, and we moved to TV, and now uh, this year we're moving to theatrical releases with uh, Universal. And... Uh, we're out of Rocky Hill, Connecticut, and that's really it. <laughs> Tell me uh, a little bit of detail. What was, what was actually the first official uh, movie for Synthetic? Uh, the first official movie was a, a title called Hell's Beacon, which is absolutely awful. Um, <laughs> I mean, none of them are great, but... <laughs> but uh, Hell's Beacon uh, was bought by Universal Studios Home Video during the DVD craze, and uh, it was changed to Predator Island. Predators, was it Predator's Island or Predator Island? Pred Predator Island, Island. and uh, because I guess hell doesn't sell well in the Midwest. <laughs> so uh, it was changed to Predator's Island, and uh, they changed the artwork to look flashy, and uh, Blockbuster bought like 80 to 100,000 units of it. So uh, that's where we started. Good. Okay, I noticed that by watching the trailer and by listening to <coughs> talk about your project, your emphasis in uh, genre, I mean, from what I see, it seems you know, to be primarily horror. Uh, would you say that all of you are primarily horror enthusiasts, or do you simply find it to be the most marketable genre? <coughs> uh, well, I know that I used to be like a super horror nerd, <laughs> like when I was a kid. That's why I, I stalked Andrew for an internship like seven years ago. Um, since working in horror, I no longer find myself really <laughs> into horror movies. <laughs> I'm kind of the opposite. I actually began um, in comedy, and I did a horror comedy as my thesis film, and have now become a horror director, I guess, mm -hmm. and um, now I watch a lot more horror than I used to. I think there's opportunities. Anybody have any questions out there in the audience like that? I'm just not. <laughs> no so questions. It's real. No <laughs> questions. We have to get yes. some good stuff. Young gentleman over here. What is like the hardest part of turning one location into something fantastic. Like, what do you think, as an art department person, is the hardest thing, like, transforming a location that's completely different than what's the original vision? Uh, well, I think the biggest part is finding somewhere that works for what you need. And Synthetic is really, really good at finding the creepiest, scuzziest places <laughs> <laughs> for us to work out of. <laughs> And then I just bring stuff in that kind of works with the natural decor. <laughs> so <laughs> I think the biggest part is finding the right place, and then you just work with it and continue with it. Yeah, you know um, you're on the right track, and there's no running water. <laughs> <laughs> I have yet to have running water on a set. <laughs> that brings up an interesting question. Uh, when you've been using a location, let's say one of the really, you know, you know, scummiest locations you could think of. Have you ever had any uh, problems in terms of, you know, getting permission to shoot there? Or did you kind of like shoot there guerrilla style and get the hell out? Oh, that, that would be a Kevin Shea question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin's this like gruff sailor that beats people up for us. Um, but no, everything we have to do we have to get permission for and insurances and all that. So we used to be very guerrilla style, but not anymore. Now we're very by the books, kind of get permission, get insurance, Pay locations and move on. By the book. Yeah. Okay. But that said, every two. location is its own. Yeah. You can't do 25 yeah. days in a place and <laughs> yeah. Style. I guess, yeah, gorilla style. Uh, why don't you give us an opportunity to tell us about your consulting services? 
Oh, we, we actually don't do any consulting. <laughs> we have that on the website, but we actually don't do that. So, yeah. I did that research for nothing. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, back in March, uh, you were holding uh, open calls in uh, Hartford for uh, a couple of your projects. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, well, for starters, number one, do you intend on holding any more open calls? I mean, for the, for the actors in the audience. Colin? Um, well, I mean, we did that last one to try to cover... Uh, miscellaneous parts through a few movies, and we're, we're still pulling people from it. I'm sure we're going to do them again in the future, but we don't have any immediate plans. Okay. Um, we will be having auditions. Okay. And uh, speaking of auditions, you know, when you uh, do you know, try out actors, um, what qualities uh, do you look for when you audition people you know, for your pieces? Like, for example, I see in the role over here, I see Dave Weindell. I believe uh, you booked him in one of your projects. Okay. Yes, we did. Now, what quality do you look for when you know when you're uh, you know measuring up an actor in an audition? What do you see that attracts you know that you find uh, the most you know beneficial? Well, I mean, eighty percent of it is is the person right for the role physically in terms of you know what what are the requirements just and and that kind of I think a lot of actors need to know just in the sense that you know you you might be awesome but not get the part because they're looking for someone who looks five years older than you or a different hair color or, or whatever because they're trying to build the whole cast. But beyond that. Personally, I like to kind of throw out, um, I'll, I'll ask them to read the scene, and then even if it was awesome, I'll ask them to change it, just see how somebody can adapt and adjust to, uh, to notes, because then you're going to need that on set. Questions in the audience at this point? Yeah. Um, I saw from the demo that there was like one scene with a uh, giant robot and stuff, um, and I'm assuming that was CJ or no? Um, no, all the robots. The robots are perfect. That was right? a Manchester movie. It was made out of cardboard. Cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the question was, uh, as a director, like, how would you feel in terms of directing actors to act and feel a certain way for something that they actually not there in front of them, but in case it actually wasn't now, so I guess my question's kind of. Well, I mean, it, it's still a, a thing we have to do, and everybody has their own way of going about it, but I just make a fool of myself and shout and wave my arms and run around. <laughs> Basically, there's a lot of embarrassing pictures. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Massachusetts. Uh, what is the permitting uh, situation down here? In the, in the, you got to get a state permit and a local permit. And as far as uh, stopping traffic locally, if anybody wanted to address that, because I had an issue with Boston. So, so that that would come back to me, I guess. Uh, most of the time we shoot on uh, private property or, or town property, and you just go through you know, the private landowner or the town. You also alert the town that you're shooting there, as well as the police and the uh, fire department, because uh, you'll be surprised how fast people call cops when lights come up. Um, but we do shut down a lot of streets, and we do shut down a lot of things like that. And what you do is you just make friends with the police, and you pay them their hourly wages. They bring out whatever they need. If you're, if you're, if you're doing a whole street, you get two cops, two cruisers. And they just, uh, police, I was just actually just pointing this out, police and ambulance people, they love sending you their bills 48 hours later. Boom. Like clockwork. So there's no actual community permit. Like we tried no. I don't know about Boston. I mean, every, yeah, every every, every uh, city and state is probably different depending on their rules. Um, a lot of times we shoot in people who have huge private property, um, and then it really doesn't matter. People don't even know we're there. Any experience on a state highway? Uh, I would never go there. I would never shoot. We're, we're dealing with getting some some roads now, and I wouldn't shoot on a state highway. Anyone else? Thank you. All right. So let me ask uh, each member of the panel, uh, you know, the challenges of uh, doing, you know, independent filmmaking, you know, I mean, they present a lot of, you know, like I said, when you got so much money, you know, there are so many challenges. Um, and, you know, as each, for each respective position you have, what was, what would you call your toughest challenge? And, you know, and what pro name what project you were working on and what do you think your toughest challenge was? <laughs> Greg, you should do this one. You do it. <laughs> this is you. Oh. Yeah. Well, um, how resourceful did you have to be? <laughs> I, one, the project we just finished earlier this week uh, took every trick I had in my book yeah. just to push the director. What's the project called? Uh, Animal. And uh, took everything I had just to, you know, keep it going and keep everything moving and finish it on time and on schedule. And uh, sometimes it's uh, you know it's a push. Sometimes it's easy, and sometimes 
you know, when you're dealing with shooting consecutive nights for weeks on end, you know, you're dealing with the morale of the crew, and that's a huge consideration. Uh, you don't want to go starting at like 8 p.m. and then finishing at 8 in the morning. It's debilitating. When you start, you want to finish it sun up and stuff like that so you know here's sun's coming up it's time to go home and you know to keep that kind of a schedule is tough you know when you know when you know we're basically cutting our shooting time to keep that schedule right how do you motivate your group uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh no i mean you know i try and you know you keep uh friends with everybody of course you know when, the, when it's business it's business but when that when I would ask for a favor I made sure I thanked everybody and you know when I asked for stuff I, I, sh I came and took the time and shook every grip in electrics hand for you know for what they did for us and then you know the next thing I say is like you know we're not doing this again so it's safe to, it's safe to assume at this point that synthetic has a reliable infrastructure of people they can always depend on or is it sometimes you always have to fish around or whatever no I'd say we have a very good uh, group of people okay what would you say was uh, synthetic's uh, most uh, you know successful project in the wine does that come back to me again? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, they all are successful in, in, in different ways. Um, for instance, some do really good on VOD, and some do really good on uh, television. In fact, all of our, our features we've done with Chiller have, uh, out of the top, actually out of the top 10 slot of what's rated on Chiller, we take up five or six of the slots. Um, so, and the top three belong to us as far as ratings. Um, so we do a lot of highly rated stuff. Um, like I said, DVD and Blu-ray sales are down, but we still get them in, in Walmart and, and Best Buy and FYE and all that kind of places. Um, and we're, we're just getting into uh, larger theatrical releases now, so we'll see, you know, their, uh, Universal's target marketing, you know, areas for our releases coming up in 2014. Um, so we're going to see how that goes. Uh, mostly, I believe, theatricals for promotion. Um, but we'll see, you know, what happens. But, uh... You know, everyone has a certain success in certain ways and a certain failure in other ways. Yeah. Anyone else want to relate? Um, from a non-commercial point of view, I personally, I think my two favorites are either um, Dead Souls or Alien Opponent, oddly, because um, <laughs> Alien Opponent, Dead Souls is just, like, pretty decent, and uh, Alien <laughs> Opponent is um, really divisive. Like, people either love it or they hate it, but there are people who love it. And so that, in its own right, is yeah. kind of a and the fact that alien opponent exists at all. <laughs> <laughs> and you should see the hate mail we get is so yeah. so obsessive about that movie. But the British people love it. British, so I don't know British what's going love, on. Oh, love alien opponent. Yeah, domestically, alien opponent didn't do well, but overseas it did pretty well. Questions in the audience. Go. Uh, now that you guys seem to kind of have this thing down to a science, or you play out a lot of projects now, um, but you guys can talk to you know how many drafts of a script you guys go through from <laughs> 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 a yeah. shooting script yeah. and just you know, talk about how, that, how many drafts of like you're going through now compared to when you started and, and uh, that whole process. Uh, it's kind of it depends. <laughs> Before you get to the scripts, the treatments. Yeah, the treat. Oh, see, the it's thing, eight months of making. The treatments. thing is, like with the chiller films now, you have to do a treatment, and not only do you have to do like one treatment, you have to do like fifteen treatments. <laughs> like you do like an initial treatment, which is like two pages long, which is just kind of like the basics. Then they make a TV works in eight acts, so you have to you have to factor in every commercial break, and you have to write that into your treatment where the commercial break is going to be. And so, like, you go through, that's, that treatment's, like, 10, 12 pages long. And, like, that's where they do most of their, like, notes is on that treatment. Like, for Deep in the Darkness, uh, the one we shot in May, we went through months and months of treatments on that. Like and, like, yeah, so. when it actually came down to the script, there was only, like, four drafts of the actual script. And, like, very little change from draft one to draft four. It was, bas like, basically just fine-tuning dialogue cutting scenes down, adding little things here and there. But yeah, it's a, it's the, the treatments are the, like the toughest part. They, and like, you know, on the ones before we did Chiller, we didn't really do treatments. Like I would write them down on a page or something, but you know, they're just like, oh, do it. So those. <laughs> yeah, we start working on stuff yeah. now that's, that we'll be shooting in 2014. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, like, the other ones, they'd be, you know, we'd 
they'd ask me to start on the script and we'd be shooting it in two months. So that, <laughs> <laughs> that was like, you know, I'd have about four weeks to write a first draft. <laughs> and, you know, there, it would just go from there. There's only, there's only like three to four drafts of that one, too. But, yeah, now it's, it's the treatments that are, uh, they take up the most time. And bounce back and forth between different groups of people who mm -hmm. comment yeah. on them. So you'll yeah. massage it back and forth like eight times with one group, and then they'll pass it to a new person who's like, you know, I just saw a show <laughs> called The Americans. What if it was more like that? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, for when we made Dead Souls, uh, American Horror Story had just hit. So it was like, oh, but American Horror Story did this, so we got to put that in. And then, you know you'll be kind of objecting towards it, but then like that will kind of go away and you get it back to where it was before. It's just it's a lot of back and forth. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> i got to ask a question. Uh, I, I've been hearing your titles of your films. How much time goes into coming up with a specific title? Uh -huh. We like to keep them high in the alphabet. Yeah. <laughs> when the VOD comes out, they're listed first. And yeah. Yeah. That's, why, that's why you're going to see a lot of A's coming out. Animal, yeah. Assault of the Sasquatch, Alien Opponent. Yeah. Yeah. All our titles are going to be started with A. A deep in the darkness. A, deep in the darkness. <laughs> a day out in the darkness. <laughs> no, it's actually a marketing team that's not involved with us that deals with the titles. Okay, uh, let me ask you a question. Do you see uh, synthetic uh, as, um, I, mean, I mean, currently you're doing like a lot of horror stuff like that. Do you see yourself uh, perhaps diversifying other genres maybe next, say over the next few years maybe? Everybody looks to me. Is there a possibility? You know yeah, um, we're, we're looking at other, other networks. Now we're on a radar, so other networks are starting to look at us for doing stuff for them. Uh, so we're, look, we're probably going to branch into family drama and uh, possibly some action-y kind of stuff. But we're going to wait to see how that goes down the pike. And we're, we're also thinking about doing a uh, mini-series or series. Nice. Any questions in the audience right now? Okay, you again. Um, right now, where there's being a, a really big discussion uh, in the industry in general with uh, digital effects versus practical effects, what do you guys feel personally is the most satisfying as far as you know, how you feel that it came out and how do you feel about it, it you know, texture, tonally, lighting, all that stuff, and, and uh, just your thoughts on that whole discussion right now? Matt and Colin? <laughs> I mean, Colin, I don't really... Uh... Matt's doing a bunch of digital effects now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I think that uh, just you have to. Uh, either's fine so long as you plan ahead and uh, you've got like uh, if you just if it doesn't work and then you're trying to fix it in post, you'll do a bad job because your thought process was uh, you know not coherent throughout. But if you uh, plan to use CG, then it's fine. Uh, I think like if you're compositing in. Uh, elements that were shot uh, practically, then that's fine. Like a lot of the times people's obsession with getting stuff practical is a waste of time. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, if it turns out well, it turns out well. I don't really care. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Colin has heavy yeah, opinions on it. I mean, <laughs> Colin will have more to I say. I mean, I think that if it turns out well, it turns out well is ultimately the, the answer, but that I, I think the best usually comes from knowing your who you have at your dis what resources you have at your disposal and how to approach each effect on its own often the best result is something practical that's augmented digitally so i mean uh, i i kind of object to the to the notion of like we do everything practically because that's how it used to be done and it's better um, often that really just looks bad or it gets fixed in post by somebody else um, Prometheus, uh, they said they did everything practically. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyone who's seen that movie knows that's not true. Uh, <laughs> but they did claim it. Um, and so, but not, and on the other hand, you know, really, you know, bad CG overused is, is awful. So you want to try to find a mix that works. Uh, question on scripts. Uh, how does one get a script to you to be produced? And uh, what, do you, uh, what do you look for in a script uh, that you know, make it special, or make it something that you especially want to do. Oh, everybody looks at me again. <laughs> well, currently we're not looking for scripts. Uh, we, we kind of get told what to do. Um, we are looking to option comic books and, and, and books that are well known and actually like published. Like can't be self-published, can't be like an Amazon published, has to be something that is in whatever existing bookstores there are or some kind of a bestseller. 
Um, currently, we're not looking for scripts. Um, you never know when we get into family drama stuff and, and action stuff, we might look for scripts. But right now, uh, you know, our scripts, like we were talking about the treatments and stuff, they're very catered to what a particular audience wants. Okay. So uh, what do you see is basically, look, what's your future plan at this point? To keep on doing what you're doing and you said, or, you know, to plan to expand? I have no future plan. I just want to work at Starbucks, actually. <laughs> so uh, I'm hoping, like, maybe a year or two, I can go work at Starbucks. So yeah. far, so I like green tea lattes. <laughs> <laughs> Questions in the audience? Someone sure. wanted to uh, say work on your next, be a part of your crew. What's the process to be a part of your crew? You said you got some good crews. You know, you tell them to stay late night and tell them thanks. How do you get this? How do you even interview the crew to be a part of your team when you're a part of the uh, production that you would do that? Well, first, you lose all your self respect. <laughs> <laughs> and then. <laughs> that, that's so fun. And then. <laughs> you continue with it. <laughs> I, I get, well, we look for, you know, we have certain positions that we always, we go to some people for, we're always looking for new people. Um, the most important thing is you have to have a skill that, that's, that's good and, you know, that we can use. Um, another thing is don't send us 5,000 emails or call me 18 times because that will definitely not get you a job, I will tell you that. Um, usually if we are looking for someone, we will find that particular person. So yeah. just make yourself known, I guess, locally, and then we'll, we'll find you, because that seems to be how we've been doing it. Yeah. I think the, the best answer is be specific and just work in the region. Um, we usually find people. I mean, we do put out, we just put out an ad for um, effects and stunts. But like um, for the most part, we get connections through people we know and uh, people who've been working in the area and get kind of good reviews. But if you're, you know, if you're very general about what you do, it's, it's harder to, to find a spot for you. So if you, you know, somebody comes to us and says, I'm a filmmaker, I'd love to work with you. It's like, what do I, what do, I do with a filmmaker? You know, if you're a, a, a sound mixer, you yeah. might need a sound mixer or a, you know, a grip, awesome, but you know, be specific. I agree with uh, Colin completely. I think that uh, specificity with respect to what you do is really important. Like if you're a grip, if you work in camera, if you uh, do a specific thing in post, if you do sound, if you do like some sort of craft and you're really good at that craft and you're consistent, then you're gonna have less trouble networking and meeting other people who need you and then you can call each other for different jobs and then when there is a job to do, someone will recommend you for that. I think it's very important to uh, have a specific craft that you do well and uh, do repeatedly, um, but I think that also you should make yourself open to doing whatever, like our uh, gaffer doesn't want to be a gaffer, he wants to be a producer, I sure as hell don't want to be doing After Effects every day, it's boring as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but but like, so good! <laughs> it's fine, no, no, it is fine, it's alright. But um, in the, like, Just you saying. have to... Yeah, you have to like, uh, you know, if, if people are doing something, you have to make yourself, uh, you have to look for opportunities, see what you're good at, see what you like, and then uh, just um, focus on, you know, whatever you fall into that uh, feels right, and uh, kind of do that, you know, consider that as a job, rather than, uh, you know, there's like two or three creative people on set, and the rest of us are just like, kind of physical labor, <laughs> like it's, you know, but that's uh, what it takes. Yeah, like most of our crew is compromised with people who have like recommended them. So like, you know, you get a job on any set and like the best form of networking is to just do a good job and then other people recommend you to other people. Like that's how we found most of our crew. Yeah. Yeah, basically everyone. Considering you have to put ads out like on like Andy or what kind of, like how do you, like you post ads, like where do you go to do that? If someone was interested in working for or something. Um, where would you, like, where would they go to find it? Uh, well, generally most of our posts are for cast, and those will be, you know, breakdown and actors access and backstage and that sort of thing. But when we, on the uh, rare occasion, when we do do a crew ad, it would be like New England Film or uh, Mandy or the Synthetic Cinema Facebook page. Oh, okay. um, we try to We try to get it as wide as we can if we're looking for something, because that means we are looking for, for it, and the more people who see it, the better. Questions? Just, just been working on the film. I realize you work on a tremendously compressed schedule. In other words, you've really got to turn this stuff out fast. And yet, you still work at a higher budget than a lot of the other local films. In other words, you're, you're probably going to the one and two billion area. Do you feel that you're going 
going to have to keep that, you're spending $2 million to make a $30 million film, and you're going to spend $4 million to do a $50 million film, and it look like, and I mean, what is the pressure on you to make a film that looks so much better than the film, your, the budget you have? Which is good. How does that work? Yeah. Well, yeah, we're not one or two million. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad you think that, because that means we're doing our job. Um, I don't know how to answer that question. I, don't, I mean, we'd like to move to larger budget films, if that's yeah. what you're thinking. Um, no, I just think, talk about the pressure to make something look so much better than the, the budget you have. Well, yeah. is there pressure? Yeah. There, uh, yeah. <laughs> with, with more money comes more. That would more. be more in um, my pressure just counting. <laughs> I mean, with more money comes more pressure for schedule that you know we, we do TV stuff and that means that we get a you know a reasonable budget um, with the drawback that it needs to be done very quickly and uh, you don't have the time to kind of hey we'll come back in a couple months and pick up that scene that we didn't get because you know they're like why aren't you done yet your rough cuts due in two weeks um, <laughs> uh, so it's yeah we have to have a full cut of the movie within one or two weeks after we finish shooting so yeah, yeah shooting yeah <laughs> Um, so the schedules are compressed, and there is definitely a pressure to, to make stuff that looks bigger than your budget. But I mean, it's, you know, what, is, what does that even mean anymore in the yeah. sense that it's, this is how much money you have, and this is the movie they want, and you have to figure out a way to deliver that as best you can. And it's, it's best to try not to overreach in the script stage, <laughs> which yeah. I say fully realizing what we're going to do next. <laughs> <laughs> it's madness. But, the, uh, you know, you try to design your, your project to be appropriate for its budget or what you think you can achieve at that budget I was well. Yeah, I was uh, talking with uh, one of our DPs about how he lit our movies, and like he was looking at something that might be uh, have a much higher budget. But uh, and I was like, well, how would you approach that differently? And he said that the budget for lighting gear and for camera would be exactly the same. All the extra money up to a certain point would be spent purely on cast and uh, on uh, you know producers' fees and stuff. So I think that once you have uh, enough money to get you know, a decent camera, and it's really decreased how much money you need to have something look really professional, and uh, you know, a decent uh, team of uh, Griffin Electrics and good you know, gear, uh, it's more about the skill of the people who are working with them than it is about um, how much money you have, um, because you could do a micro-budget thing and have everyone working for free, and if they're good, they'll do a good job, or you could have something that costs like a million or two. And uh, you know they'll do the same job, and then up past up to a certain point, you're spending more money on talent and producers than I think you're spending on uh, actually production value. So uh, just look to I think art design is the most important thing because you uh, if your location looks no I, I think so because if your location looks good then like it doesn't matter how you light it. Also a really attractive cast. You need a good yeah, looking cast. Really good really good looking cast. I don't care. Spend all your money getting a good looking cast. I have a friend who like blew up. He was like. He got into like he got like a ton of money. He was doing like huge stuff for a minute, and like he got there because he just like spent all his money on hiring like very attractive people to be in his uh, <laughs> promo in his uh, like spec videos. It's true. Like I mean, if you look at specs that blow up, you just need really good looking people and really good looking uh, <laughs> locations. And then second to that is lighting. You got to light it well. Uh, third after that's camera, and then in post you can only do so much. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. Well, that was yeah. very yeah. That was good. That was very intense. I like that. But I will That's say the there, most you said all week. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> there is also a definite uh, trap to fall into with in terms of production value versus actual budget in the sense that if you make a, and what I said before, of like trying to target your, your, your project to meet the budget appropriately, because really all that matters is, is the movie good. And um, if you make a mediocre movie that looks like a $5 million movie but cost half a million dollars, all anyone will ever think when they see it is, you made a kind of bad $5 million movie. Because um, they don't know how much you spent on it. Nobody ever knows unless you go post it somewhere and then they don't even know if it's true or not. So you know, ultimately, it's just try to make the best movie you can. And just to uh, drop some names, I talked, with, uh, <laughs> I talked with my boy who uh, directed this little TV series, and then he directed this little movie, uh, was Buffy and the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what was it like, because I thought the Avengers was pretty good, I said, what was it like uh, having all this additional freedom? You know, you get this little set, and you don't get to, you're shooting TV, you're on a very compressed schedule, and now you're shooting this huge feature, how do you enjoy that freedom? And he said that on set, it was the exact same struggle. They said that the schedule, he said the schedule was really tight. He said they weren't able to get all the shots he wanted. He said the vast majority of the money was spent on actors' salaries and also in post. He said he had a ton of freedom in post to do whatever he wanted. 
but in terms of like uh, it being a struggle on set to make your day, it was exactly the same on you know a huge two hundred million dollar feature as it was on a uh, TV series. So I think that uh, you know trying to get the most for your money is something that never changes, particularly on set. In the land of art department, it's always kind of budget versus big ideas. Okay, we want this. We have this. So how do we make that look like that? So, okay, we need to fill an entire cabin full of lots of furniture. All right, I'm going to go dumpster diving <laughs> and find <laughs> things and put them up and make it look like we had a lot more. Yeah, or what? you make friends with people who have lots of cool stuff and then you rent it for a lot cheaper. Like um, during Deep in the Darkness, we got very lucky and found some good places where we could rent some really cool looking furniture and then it made it look awesome, I think. <laughs> whenever, whenever I see crap furniture on the side of the road, I'm like, Jeanette would love that. <laughs> Slap some paint on it, it's better. <laughs> Just duct tape, it's fine. <laughs> it's a hole in it, put a blanket over it. <laughs> Did that. <laughs> I do not. I. I mean, I have some FedEx basement. We have a full basement. I like full putting of stuff. stuff there. <laughs> it's kind of cool when you go out and clean the guns out in Rocky Hill and the cops come by. <laughs> yeah, fake guns, fake guns. Cops don't always think it's fake guns. Yeah, yeah. we almost had somebody arrested. arrested. <laughs> <laughs> you have to alert the police before you do that. Any other questions in the audience? Okay. Uh, one thing now, um, okay, tell us a little bit more about the projects that you have done and where these people can find them. Okay, starting with the most recent one. Everybody looks at me. Oh, my you goodness. know everything. Well, we are, uh, the only place you can find them is in this box. We have, uh, we have, uh, <laughs> we have a bunch of DVDs we're going to be giving out to people. This is the only copies we actually have. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so after the thing, we can give these out to whoever, the eight people here. Um, uh, they are on, they're at Walmart, they're on Chiller, they're on Sci-Fi, they're on Netflix. They're basically kind of everywhere. So. Okay, last call for any questions from the audience. Anybody want to do that? Can I get a film? Which one do you want? Yeah. Do you like zombies, banshees, sasquatches, aliens killing rednecks, or like a ghost story? <laughs> what do you want? Anyone you want? Anyone you think that's the best one? Where, what town are you from? What town are you from? Hartford. Oh, uh, that doesn't help you. I was going to say, well, this is closest Sasquatch to Hartford. Is in Hartford. Oh, Sasquatch is in Hartford? Oh, yeah, Sasquatch was in the, uh, the bowels of Hartford. I don't, don't watch that movie. Do not email me about that. It's terrible. Don't, no, no. Yeah, no emailing me about terribleness. And if you don't like opponent, you have no sense of humor. I got a crazy question for you guys. You saw Sharknado, right? It's terrible. Sharknado got huge ratings, though. Huge ratings. And he did a blitz in the theaters, too. Yep, yeah, yeah. It got 200 theaters, yep. It went up in ratings. When it first came out, and then to the third showing, it got triple the ratings on that. And that's why they're doing Sharknado 2, the second one. The second yeah. one. I think the title was This Bites. Right? Yeah, I think we almost actually got Sharknado 3. Yeah. Almost came to Colin, yeah, Colin turned it down. <laughs> so, hey, I don't know why. You see stuff like Sharknado, what do you guys think? Do I mean, do you want to, do you, what do you want to do? You want to try reading that same book? No. Absolutely not. No, I don't want to do Sharknado. No. Never. No. <laughs> That's their, that's, the Asylum makes all those movies. Asylum can say yeah, those. That, that's their thing. Okay. I like that violin. It's like my, it's like my funeral in Ireland. <laughs> my or is Ke did Kevin die? Is that why he's not here? Okay, you got a giant back there. Go ahead. I have a comment and uh, two questions. Uh, the comment is, uh, you guys look like you're like perfectly cast for the roles that you have, like right out of Argo. <laughs> uh, the question is, are the films, do you, are, are the union uh, cast and crew, and uh, what kind of uh, cameras are you shooting with these? There are, most of them are, are, are SAG. Uh, there's no union crews. Um, but uh, we do go back and forth between SAG and non-SAG, depending on what the film is. So... That does happen, but SAG is the only union we use. Shoot on the Alexa, which is the best. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we shoot on the Alexa, is the mostly, best. Mostly. <laughs> it's a box that you push a red button. Really. Yeah, That's just push the red button. We have had an assortment of other cameras as B cameras, though. Um, mm -hmm. I think we've used everything. We used 35 millimeter, red, 
Yep. We yeah. had a red one. We've DSLRs. had 35. We had HVX. DSLRs. We had a C100. We had a HVX. The HVX. HVX. Shot a bunch 5D of the movies on the HVX 200. <laughs> GoPros. And GoPros. And GoPros. Yeah. And GoPros. Yeah. I like to beat them up. <laughs> yeah, you can pick a film based on camera, actually. We have HVX. We have 35 millimeter. We have Airy, Alexa. And don't, don't be fooled. 35 millimeter is not better than the Alexa. Yes. <laughs> I have another question, that is, with your attitude and the speed that you work at, you seem to be so close to comedy. How come you don't step over to comedy? Comedy's uh, a hard sell. We've, we've, uh, yeah. we've walked that line a couple, especially with Alien Opponent, we've definitely walked that line. Did you say it's a parody? Alien Opponent's a, I don't <laughs> I think we just thought of it's different a ways really to It's a really mean comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I think to, to sell a low-budget comedy is tougher yeah. because you need a more recognizable face on it. Yeah. Uh, so like if you have a comedy with no one that anyone... You need a face that like someone recognizes, even if it's not a name you know. You need to like look at the yeah. box art and see, like oh, that's a name that I've seen somewhere. Or that's a face that I've seen somewhere. And if you're selling a comedy, it needs to be uh, you know a more recognizable name or face. And if a comedy is terrible, it's unwatchable. Whereas like if a horror movie is terrible, it's still watchable because people get... <laughs> Cut, and cut also, up. yeah, it's like gory, but like <laughs> Chiller's also very into. They want to make um, serious, scary films, and so that's why we've been kind of leaning towards them a lot lately. Which you know, it's, it's a nice change. We started off doing very schlocky and like cheesy, fun movies, and like we got to switch over to more serious films, which is a nice change. Like to go back to comedy eventually one day, but we might get some comedies yeah. that John will like to write pretty soon. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to reading. Them. Yes. <laughs> There's a number of us who would like to do comedies, but at this point, you know, we're doing movies for people, uh, for other people, basically. And, yeah, it's and like we are a genre company. Yeah, and we like, like, we like the movies that we do. Like, I know we say what they're terrible, we don't like, but we actually enjoy doing the ones that we are doing. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last call for any questions from the audience. Any takers? Yo, you again. <laughs> what would you guys say is favorite movie out of all of them? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, uh, my least favorite out of the ones I've worked on is probably Banshee. Um, just because I know Colin knows it was, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, the, I came into the, there was already a script written and I rewrote it. And it's just kind of, ah, it's the first thing I ever wrote and I'm not completely happy with it. And uh, I don't know, Colin, how you feel about I'm it. I'm actually going to agree with you, John. That's my least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> of, of the ones that I've done, yeah. it's my least favorite. You know, people, it's also my oh, first directing, yeah. and, uh, you know. Yeah. A lot of people like it. Like, when it plays on Chiller, they still say it gets, like, great ratings. And, like, I watched it the other day, and it's still, it's a fun movie. It goes super fast. It's very, it's bloody. It's a lot of fun. But, yeah, it's my least favorite. I'd be curious to hear what everybody else in this line says on that question. <laughs> <laughs> They're all my least favorite. <laughs> I, I always like the next one we're doing. Yeah. When we're working on the next one, I hate that one. Yeah. So it's just they're all my least favorite. The one we're working on is my least favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Which one is that? Deep in Darkness? Deep in Darkness. That yeah. is good. You just have 300 more shots. Good. I haven't seen it yet. It's good. 300 more shots, you can see it. He's got to do digital effects. Oh, hurry up. What are you doing here? <laughs> and that's why it's his least favorite. <laughs> Greg hasn't even seen him. Uh, I saw Alien Opponent long before you didn't affiliated even with, the, with this group. Greg won't watch Sorry. Dead Souls because it's too scary. I saw really? Dead Souls. Did you great. really? I liked okay, it. I liked it. Check this out. Okay, one, one question. Uh, you know, how, uh, how do you, we find out more about Synthetic Cinema? www.syntheticcinema.com. We don't really update the website because yeah. he doesn't fix anything. <laughs> but uh, that's Paul. Go to go if you go to Facebook. He he's the webmaster. Um, he's he'll do a new he'll do, he'll do a new website shortly. But actually, we've been just updating on Facebook. So if you friend us on Facebook, uh, we like to stay off the radar. If you, if you want to h h listen to terrible terrible things of my meanderings, Twitter is a fantastic place to find them. Yeah. Yep. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. You making this guy out to be the whipping boy? Is that it? Oh, yeah, yes. always, always. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there's also the commentary tracks in the movies, many yeah. of which are terrible. If you want to find a list of um, how to ruin a good weekend, you can go to our IMDb page. Yeah. <laughs> That's <another> thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you got me curious, now. What, what kind of special features do you have on these? It's like everything's like we got the Delete. people rave about our commentaries for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why, but everyone has a commentary on them. 
It's just this. Yeah, it's just yeah, this. For like two hours. It's us dicking around for two hours. <laughs> Talking about it's fun. Yeah, yeah, plus some drinking. There's, yeah. there's deleted scenes. There's, yeah, yeah. there's a bunch we're, of We're drunk on this one, if anyone wants to check <laughs> it. And I didn't even do that. They actually recorded the whole thing once, and then the recording failed due to Colin Faye. <laughs> so I left, because I'm like, I don't want to watch this movie again. So I, I left. Which so. is too bad, because the first version was awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really good. The one that's on there. Yeah, but yeah, most of them have like. Does Sasquatch have it? Sasquatch, yeah. Did it? That's when I opened up and I talked about somebody uh, taking. Did it say I read the script? (laughs) I didn't read the script when I said that, right? Did I say I didn't read the script? Probably. Yeah. I directed this movie. I didn't even read the script. (laughs) All I know is a Sasquatch coming in a room killing people. It wasn't that good worth reading. No, no. no. (laughs) Now I read them once. Yeah. I read one this past weekend. Yeah, no, I send you notes. And, and he'll never read another joke. I'm like, what the hell is this movie about? <laughs> he, did, he did read one this week. I, uh, I, did, I do read true. the scripts once, but I don't like revisions and stuff. Okay, so before closing out the uh, panel, do you want to add anything before we adjourn? I'm sorry if you watch the movies. <laughs> But you should watch them anyway. But you should watch them anyway. <laughs> How do we decide who gets free DVDs? You That's guys why have you to battle given it to out. People who asked questions. Oh uh, no! Who, who's the, who asked questions? You guys get to pick yeah. first. Yeah. Okay, so people who ask questions can take whatever DVD you want. <laughs> well, anyway, as I've been a very colorful panel, let's give a nice big round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>